Hello, and good evening. Um, thank you for tuning in to tonight's quarantine concert uh, put on by Chicago's, Chicago's Experimental Sound Studio. Um, my name's Daniel Tovar. I curated tonight's uh, show. Um, the people on our, on our slate tonight are all associated with the Southern California Institute of Architecture, or SciArc, as we like to call it. Um, we have undergrads, we have MA students, we have alumni, and in my case, faculty. Um, the idea for this show came about uh, after a class I taught last semester where we went over briefly a segment on sound design in urban areas. <clears throat> I learned uh, that there are a number of students in the school who are interested in the intersection between architecture and sound and after speaking with a number of them, I, I thought that there was an interesting similarity in their approach to sound that to me seemed distinctly architectural and interesting given the history of, um, of sound in, in art. Um, since Pierre Schaeffer and Music Concrete, um, a lot of experimental music and sound art has been interested in sound, the medium of sound itself, um, divorcing it from uh, the, the material things that, that cause sound or the people that play it. Uh, and I think one of the best examples of this uh, is artists who like to play shows in complete blackness um, so the audience is able to focus on the sound itself. Um, and filter out all of those things that are unnecessary. It causes the, uh, the artist playing the, the sounds. Um, in contrast, the architectural approach to sound is interested in sound precisely for uh, its connection to the material world, to those material things that, that cause it. Um, they're interested in it in the sense that it is another avenue of access to the world. It can tell us things, uh, can tell us the texture of an object, for example, can tell us about hidden aspects of a landscape. Um, it can give us information about a space that would be impossible to convey visually. Um, so without further ado, I will start things off uh, tonight with the first set. Um, thank you again, everybody, for, for tuning in tonight, and I will get started. What is a video game? At bottom, just a series of physical states represented by zeros and ones, which a computer interprets, creating a separate visual world into which we can imaginatively escape. now look back at the earth itself, generating models of the actual landscape. By exploring these generated virtual worlds, we can explore our own. Thank you. 
lecture, John Cage says, the wisest thing to do is to open one's ears immediately and hear a sound suddenly before one's thinking has a chance to turn it into something logical. But what one immediately hears is not a sound. You are listening to me speak and immediately grasp the meanings of these words. The sound is hardly noticed. The everyday experience of nonverbal mundane sounds is often similar we immediately hear the world. The sound is barely there.
Situationists advocated for exploring the city by means of the day reeve, an aimless walk meant to take one on new routes, allowing one to see the city anew. Today, we understand that the city extends far beyond its borders, affecting entire regions, hemispheres, the whole earth itself. While a simple stroll might not give us a new or illuminating vantage point on the city, perhaps technology can help us take a virtual stroll, allowing us to see new connections between the regions that constitute a city.
Of course, we should remember we're in Google's Earth now. Thanks very much. Uh, I believe Jonathan Ong is on next.